My name is Dr. Jameel. I am a surgical gastroenterologist and minimal access surgeon at Apollo Main Hospitals in Greens Road in Chennai. Acid reflux is a very common problem. It is experienced by millions of people worldwide. When the contents of the stomach, be it the food that we eat or the water that we drink or the acid in the stomach, when they reflux up into the foot pipe or the esophagus, uh, it causes a variety of symptoms and this is what we call as acid reflux disease. The, the exact medical terminology for it is gastroesophageal reflux disease. We abbreviate it as GERD and we often call it as GERD. It happens essentially because there is a defect in the valve mechanism uh, which, which, which all of us have uh, between the stomach and the esophagus. So basically it's a one-way valve mechanism. It opens up when we eat and it's supposed to close as soon as we finished eating, stopping the acid and the food from coming up. When this goes defective, uh, acid reflux occurs. Now the main symptoms of gastroesophageal reflux disease are uh, heartburn and regurgitation. Heartburn is when uh, patients have a feeling of uh, discomfort uh, or a burning sensation behind their breast bone. Uh, it can often be mistaken as a heart attack, quite rightly. I mean patients get alarmed when they get that symptom and they go to the cardiologist and the cardiologist does all the evaluation. And once uh, they are told that uh, there's nothing wrong with the heart, they come to the gastrointestinal um, specialist. And that's when they get evaluated for GERD. Uh, the other symptom, which is regurgitation, is basically um, regurgitation of the food and the fluid all the way up, even up to the um, upper part of the uh, foot pipe sometimes. It can be quite disabling. Um, you know, patients uh, can have a feeling of nausea all the time. They can't stoop forwards. They, they, they sometimes they even vomit when they bend forwards. So it can significantly affect the quality of their lives. Uh, I mean heartburn and regurgitation are basically the, the typical symptoms, but there are also other atypical symptoms of GERD. Uh, patients can experience a feeling of a lumpiness in the throat. Um, they can have a, a hoarseness of their voice, a change in their voice or they can have recurrent chest infections because of refluxing of this fluid into the respiratory system. R rarely they can also have dental caries, again because of the same uh, 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 mechanism which is refluxing of the fluid all the way up to the back of their throat. How do we evaluate these patients? Well, the first and the most important investigation that needs to happen is an upper GI endoscopy. Uh, what it means is we pass a tube which goes down the mouth uh, through the esophagus and into the stomach. Uh, this test is a good test uh, to give an idea about the integrity of that valve mechanism. But more important than that, this upper GI endoscopy also gives us an idea about the inner lining of the foot pipe and the stomach. Um, uh, just to explain it in a bit more detail, uh, the, 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 the lining of the foot pipe is quite different from the lining of the stomach. We call the lining of the foot pipe as a squamous lining and the lining of the stomach columnar lining. Um, the columnar lining is quite a strong lining. It's supposed to withstand the, the acid in the stomach, whereas the squamous lining is not, is not that sort of a, uh, of, a, of a lining. So it can easily get damaged, eroded when acid comes up. So when we do an endoscope, we are able to see if there's any change to the lining in the lower part of the uh, foot pipe. And uh, if there are any specific changes, any worrying changes, we can even take biopsies uh, to, to decide where next we have to proceed. Uh, endoscopy is also good for giving us an idea about whether the patient has an associated hiatus hernia, which is another common condition. Reflux and hiatus hernia often uh, coexist, but then not every patient with hiatus hernia needs to have reflux. But it's something that uh, we would like to know uh, in an upper GI endoscopy. 
Now, if the if the patient uh, is going to have only medical treatment, an upper GI endoscopy is usually all that is required. However, if the patient goes on to have other forms of treatment, such as laparoscopic surgery, you know, which we will talk about in a little while, um, they need to have other uh, other investigations as well. And uh, and these are specific investigations, and we call them as a 24-hour esophageal pH and an esophageal manometry. Basically, what it means is a test which will give us an indication about the level of acid in the foot pipe, level of acid in the stomach, and uh, and also uh, it gives us an indication about how well the foot pipe contracts to dispose of the excess acid that refluxes into it. It's a it's a very thorough test. It gives us an objective assessment of how much reflux is happening uh, on a 24-hour period and that certainly helps us to decide further management. When it comes to treatment, there are three aspects to treatment for gastroesophageal reflux disease. There's the dietary and the lifestyle uh, modifications, there's the medical treatment and there's the surgical treatment. Generally speaking, patients who are obese, patients who are on a very high fat diet, uh, patients who have the habit of eating full stomach, particularly before going to bed, are patients who are uh, and, and patients who drink excessive alcohol are the ones who have an increased problem with uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease. And therefore, uh, needless to say, um, you got to uh, keep your weight uh, to the optimum, uh, have a healthy diet, uh, stop drinking alcohol, and also develop the habit of uh, having your last meal of the day at least a couple of hours before you retire to bed. Um, regular exercise uh, definitely helps and in addition to that if you've got uh, reflux problems interfering with the uh, quality of your uh, sleep, quality of your sleep or if you have to, if it makes you wake up in the middle of the night, uh, then it is recommended that uh, you have the upper part of your body uh, inclined at about say 30 degrees or so, so that uh, the gravity aids in the uh, descent of the fluid that's refluxed back into the foot pipe. So these are all uh, some of the things that you can do to uh, bring your reflux symptoms down. Uh, in addition to that, there are medications that are available. Your doctor will be able to prescribe them for you. There's the um, uh, medications that follow the category of uh, H2 blockers, you know, there's things like ranitidine and famotidine and so on, and then the other uh, generation medications which are the proton pump inhibitors like omeprazole and lansoprazole. So your clinician will be able to uh, guide you as to uh, which medication would be appropriate for you and uh, how long you have to take and so on. Uh, most of the uh, patients with GERD, they have their symptoms kept under control with adequate dietary modification, lifestyle modification and medications. However, um, if patients' symptoms persist despite maximal medical therapy or if the patients' uh, symptoms are controlled with medical therapy but they are young and they just don't want to uh, live a lifetime on uh, lots of medications to keep these symptoms under control or if they develop any complications related to GERD, um, it is recommended that they go for surgical treatment. Surgical treatment these days is almost all the time laparoscopic uh, surgical treatment. Uh, gone are the days when this operation was done by the open method. Uh, it's called laparoscopic anti-reflux surgery. The most common surgery that we do is a laparoscopic Nissen fundoplication. Um, it is uh, done under general anesthetic, four or five holes in the abdomen and um, uh, patients usually are in the hospital for a couple of days uh, and essentially what we do is we recreate that valve mechanism. The mechanism which was defective, we try and recreate that mechanism not by 
using any prosthesis or, or anything, anything from outside. We, we recreate using the patient's own tissues. And what we do is take the upper part of the stomach and uh, create a wrap around the, uh, the place, what we call as a gastroesophageal uh, junction. And uh, by creating that wrap, uh, an immediate mechanical effect is achieved and uh, patients are uh, reflux free the day after surgery and they're usually very happy about it and the results are, uh, are excellent and the, the, the best part of it is that uh, some of these young patients they come off their medications and they live reflux free for uh, a number of years. Now why is it important that uh, this issue needs to be addressed and treated. It's, it's because um, people who have reflux untreated for years together or decades together are at an increased risk of developing uh, cancer of the foot pipe, cancer of the lower end of the foot pipe. Uh, foot pipe uh, in, in medical terminology is called esophagus. So esophagus can also develop cancers like any other part of the gastrointestinal system. Broadly speaking, there are two types of cancers in the esophagus. One is a squamous cell carcinoma, the other is a adenocarcinoma. Squamous cell carcinoma occurs mainly in the upper third of the esophagus and the middle third of the esophagus. Adenocarcinoma usually occurs in the lower part, lower third of the esophagus and at the uh, esophagogastric junction, which is the junction of the esophagus and the stomach. Um, unfortunately, the incidence of this adenocarcinoma has gone up um, quite significantly worldwide as well as in India in the last 25 to 30 years. And the main risk factor that has been implicated in this increased incidence of uh, junctional adenocarcinomas or lower esophageal adenocarcinomas is the reflux, the, the patients who live with reflux, untreated reflux. So it is quite important that uh, if you are one of those who has been suffering from reflux for years together, um, sometimes on medication, sometimes off medications, and you develop certain uh, warning signs, uh, which I will enumerate in a little while, you seek medical attention immediately, you get an upper GI endoscopy uh, and, and have uh, proper guidance and proper treatment. Now, what are these warning signs? Now, if you have reflux for a long period of time and uh, one fine morning you wake up with difficulty in swallowing, um, we call it dysphagia, so difficulty in swallowing uh, or you have been losing weight for no good reason, you've been eating okay but still you've been losing weight or if you've been found to be anemic on a, just a routine uh, blood test that you may have had done, um, you should be concerned. You should be concerned and you should have your, um, your reflux further evaluated. Not to say that all of these are indicators of cancer all the time but then if you develop dysphagia it may be an indication that the part of the lower end of the esophagus which has been constantly affected by this chronic reflux has developed a, has developed a growth or a cancer and that's causing blockage of food and, and, uh, and water down. So it needs immediate attention, it needs immediate treatment. There are other reasons also why dysphagia can occur. You know sometimes you could develop a benign stricture because of constant reflux but it's always important to uh, rule out the, the, the worst case scenario. In summary, uh, what I would like to say is uh, uh, the condition gastroesophageal reflux disease is a very common condition and uh, it is something that uh, millions of people experience and it's important that we understand that it is because of a genuine problem in, the, uh, in that valve mechanism that I talked to you about. Um, good dietary discipline, uh, appropriate lifestyle changes and medical therapy usually is uh, good enough for keeping majority of the patient's uh, symptoms at bay. However, if 
the symptoms are not getting controlled or if there are other concerning issues that come up in, in your uh, daily life, then it's very important that you seek medical attention because there is definite treatment available, be it uh, laparoscopic surgery, anti-reflux surgery, or be it uh, even uh, surgery for uh, cancer, if at all, uh, unfortunately, it develops. There is good treatment available for it. The bottom line is you've got to be aware of the disease and you've got to seek medical attention appropriately.